Okay. I have a headache. It is 9 o'clock at night. Uh, and this is my third time filming the video. So, I really hope it turns out fine because I need to edit this video and get it up because I'm still not prepared for tomorrow. <laughs> Hi everybody, it's me Maddie, and welcome back to another video. If you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Maddie, and I post book related content every single Monday. Uh, and sometimes I post fun little extra content, like this past Sunday, Saturday, this past Saturday, I posted my reaction to the Shadow and Bone trailer, uh, and that trailer is just fantastic, and I cannot wait to see the show. Um, so watch that, link in the description box, and at the end of the video on the screen. Anyway, let's, let's, let's talk about February. How'd it go? Well, I read three books. Um, I was really, really in a reading slump in February. I definitely could tell. Um, I would pick up books. Like, I picked up books, right? And then I read, like, two pages at most, and I was like, no. I'm just not interested. And I tried many, many books throughout the entire month, but I just could not get into them. I read uh, three books with my granny. We had uh two four stars one two star so we had like a pretty good reading month when you look at it i mean it's a 66 uh percent greatness but like that's not a good grade or a good score either um but you know when you don't look at it percentage wise it's a pretty good deal okay I'm losing my mind, so without further ado, let's get into the three books that I read with my granny for the month of February. So, the first book my granny and I ended up finishing in February was The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss. This is the first book that I thought I could get a five star out of for, like, the book, and I gave it a four, so, like, it was still a good book. It just, it, I couldn't have given it a five because the words so many words per page. I mean, guys, guys, there's just, there's so many words per page. And yes, yes, I am accounting the formatting, something that a traditionally published author has no say in towards my rating because it affected my enjoyment of the book. This is basically a murder mystery set in the 1800s. If you've read Stocky Jack the Ripper, same exact time frame. It deals with Jack the Ripper's murders and bodies and stuff like that. Uh, this follows Mary Jekyll, who is the daughter of Dr. Jekyll. After her mother has passed away, she's broke and poor, but when she finds out that her mother has been making donations to a society of types uh, for the care of this one person that goes by the name of Hyde, she is instantly intrigued because Hyde is a murderer and he was on the run. But when she gets to this society, she finds out that it's actually a person that, named Diana and she's now the caretaker of this young girl. Uh, she ends up meeting Mr. Holmes and Watson gets dragged into the Jack the Ripper cases because they relate to the Hyde person. Um, and we also have some more characters. We have Catherine Moreau, we have Rep, 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 Rappuccini, and we have some, we have Frankenstein. This is just like a girl gang solving murder mysteries that aren't really murder mysteries because it was kind of quite obvious who the murderer was, but you're more intrigued about what the heck the society is and why all these kids with weird, like, magical abilities, but not magical abilities, just like these weird children that are now grown women exist. Like, that's kind of what the book is about. I have, I literally just, like, no idea what I just said, so I kind of hope it made sense. Um... It was a good book, and I did thoroughly enjoy this, but every single time my granny and I talked on the phone after our daily reading of this book, we all, we both said the same thing was, holy crap, that's a lot of words to read. And, like, when you're reading a book and you can physically feel the time around you and, like, feeling the earth move... That was a, that wasn't like literally, but like you can, you can, that's like when you can feel yourself aging, uh, while reading, 
that's not like the best thing and just with how many words per page it just felt like it took so long to read a page. I counted it out. It took me a little over a minute per page. You know, on like a good on like a good day. I didn't read this I didn't read my pages on good days only. Uh but it was just it was enjoyable. I liked it, but I won't be reading the sequel, I don't think, because that's like an 800 page book. I already know that like like 200 pages of it could have been cut and again, the font it's so small. Why? Yeah, it's not illegal to have words that are visible to the eyeballs, okay? Like, you don't need to make the font so small that you have to go out and buy a freaking telescope to read it. Like, seriously, okay? Make the words bigger. Trust me, it's gonna be fine. I mean, it's gonna cost you more, I guess, but, like, it'll be fine. Alright, and then my granny and I read The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. Yes, I finally did it. I finally read The Hazelwood. If you've been around my channel for long at all, then you know, you know that I have tried to read this over and over and over again. Whenever I have my mom on the channel and I'm like, hey mom, pick out a book for me to read this month. And she always gravitates towards this book. Like if it's in her, if it's like in her eyesight, this is the one she goes straight for. Well, Mom, I finally read it, and I hated it. I gave this two stars. My granny gave this two stars as well. I hate the main character. The main character is named Alice, and I hate Alice so, so much. It's told in first person, too, so, like, you don't even get, like, a foot out of her head. You're in her head this entire book, and she's such a horrible character. She's always complaining, and she's, like, downgrading so many of, like, she's so judgy, and just the way she treated Finch, not Finch, Elroy. What? Is his name? What is his name? Ellery Finch. Okay, I thought that was wrong. No, his name is Ellery Finch. But the way she treats Ellery is just so completely rude and disrespectful. Like, dude, he's helping you out even after you, like, smacked him in the face. Figuratively, she didn't actually smack him in the face, I don't believe. I don't think she did. I didn't read this book, really. I mean, I read it, but, like, I skim read it. And when I got boring, I didn't read it. I just read one word. At the end of the book, I read one word per paragraph. I was like, okay, yes. Mother's back. Okay, yes. Alice is back. Okay, yes. Sidewalks. All right. Like, cars. Word to dress. Okay. Like, that's what I was doing. And so, let me tell you guys my granny's opinions on this because, um, they're quite amazing. So, let me just pull it out on my phone, uh, because I actually have, like, word for word what she said when we were on the phone. So, my granny thought this book was a waste of time and she got nothing out of it. She's the only, like, the last book she even said something close to that about was The Library of the Unwritten. And we DNF that. So, uh, we, like, she didn't even say that much about that book. Uh, and we, fit, like, okay. Uh, she can't believe that this book got published. She didn't, she didn't like the language used in the last of it. And she doesn't understand why there had to be so much cussing in it. And that is definitely, like, something, like, I agree with. There, the main character in this book cusses so much it's really really ridiculous and dumb and just like if you cut out her cussing it like it wouldn't take anything from the story sometimes like there needs to be like a couple of curse words thrown into a story to like set the tone whether it be horror or like like upset like you know what I mean but this book none of it was needed none of it like the author could have cut out the curse words and lowered the main character's age and made it a middle grade. And honestly, 
You might have wanted to do that. It might have been more fun. But now, now I know not to pick. Like, this is something I would never pick up nowadays. I got this book when, like, before I even knew what I liked to read. And nowadays I know that I do not like to read this. This is, like, a magical, realism, ridiculous, stupid book. And I am not a magical, re realism, ridiculously stupid book type of person, okay? So, this... Only real quick, follows Alice after her mother gets taken by these people who her grandmother created because her grandmother's a famous author and these characters, these people who kidnapped her mother just happen to be the characters in the book. That's just, she goes, saves them, there's betrayals, there's stuff revealed. I really don't remember because I skipped a lot of it. Um, well, like, skimmed a lot of it, skipped some of it. I skipped more than I should have. All right, and I just finished this book uh, earlier today, and that is The Lost Hero by Rick Riordan. This is the first book in the Heroes of Olympus series by the man himself, and both my granny and I gave this a four star. Or at least I think my granny is going to give it a four star because like we talked about it earlier today before we finished the book, she said we're gonna give it a four, but then we didn't talk after we finished yet, and I need to edit this video and get it up, um, because I'm not going to be, all, like, I'm taking a weekend off of electronics, so therefore I just, like, you know, anyway, four stars from me and my granny. Um, this book, I did enjoy it. I really like Rick Riordan's writing style, though I prefer the way the Percy Jackson series was written, just probably, probably because I really like Percy Jackson as a character, but I did enjoy this book. My favorite out of the three was Jason. I don't know. He's another child of the big three. Eh. Um, this book basically follows three children. Jason, who has no memory of who he was before he wakes up on the bus. Piper, who is supposed to be Jason's girlfriend, though he has no memory of her. And Leo, who is Jason's best friend. These three children all find out that they are demigods, and they get sent on this quest. It takes place, it, this book takes place over four days. This book did not need to be this long, okay? Um, and, uh, they have to save the world. I mean, it's Percy Jackson, basically. Well, like, it's set in Percy Jackson world, so it has, okay. My mind is just not working. Um, I don't know how to explain these books. Are you, if you're new here, like, watch my, the videos where I talk about Percy Jackson because they get ridiculous. Anyway, I enjoyed this book, though this book was very, very slow. It took, like, a long time to get going, and even when you got to the fight scenes, it was kind of just like, eh. Um, I really, really liked it, and, uh, the ending, I was like, whoa! Like, I had, like, theories about how this book was gonna end, and you were like, ha nope! So, there's that. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to read the sequel, though I kind of wish... I don't, I can't say, because it would be spoilers. Alright, that's the end. Was this video bad? Probably. I have a headache. I need to go finish uh, getting stuff ready for tomorrow, so. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching February's wrap-up. I'm sorry that it was a complete mess. I mean, it's probably my mood, but... Oh well. I love you all so much. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to give it a big fat thumbs up. Subscribe down below because I post videos on this channel every single Monday. And so, I'll see you guys next Monday for another video. And hey, don't forget, I'm still a freaking bulldozer. Bye everyone.